Hello? Hello? Testing? Testing? Hello? Hello? Good morning. <clears throat> Today is Saturday, February 19th, 2022. This is our regular yoga therapy session. And in this pandemic time, it is becoming virtual now. Today we have an interesting topic. Today's topic is yoga therapy, restoring ojas. Let me just explain to you a little bit because the practice what you do, what you call a daily practice, it is all about the improving your health and also treatment of your disease. Underlying chronic diseases, especially lifestyle related disorders, yoga as a therapy is in yoga called a dhanantari oshudhi. Dhanantari means is the treatment for the underlying condition. The last session we did is called yoga therapy for rejuvenation. Rejuvenate means being younger again. Younger means hopefully you don't have any underlying chronic diseases. And that's what it is. Yoga practice, the therapeutic component gives us a quality, disease-free, medication-free, quality life which is called the compression of the morbidity. Like we are all morbid, we are going to have some this chronic diseases, but practice of yoga compresses it to the end of our life. This rejuvenation takes place and according to yoga as a therapy, due to three component. And you all know the Yoga as a therapy is based on Ayurvedic principle. Ayurveda. Ayu means longevity. Veda is the knowledge. The knowledge which gives us the longevity. Ayurveda. Ayurveda and yoga comes from the same origin. It has the same root. In Ayurveda, the health is defined with the three elements called prana, teja, and ojas. The health definition in Ayurvedic yoga therapy is prana is flowing, teja is glowing, and oja is restoring. So what is prana, teja and ojas? Prana is a subtle energy which is carried by our breath. Breath is not the prana. Metaphorically, prana is like your electricity and breath is like the electric cable. It is a subtle energy which you cannot measure. It is not a measurable energy like your you know, electric, magnetic, our muscle contraction, all the energies we have in our body. 
prana flows throughout the whole body through a channel called nadi. Nadis are called channels. And the free flow of prana is the state of health. If the prana cannot flow properly, primarily from the blockage of this channel called the nadis, and the blockage comes from a toxin called ama, and the toxin comes for proper indigestion of the food. And we'll see how all of them are so connected and what food does for our body's health. We all talk about food, food and food, you know, I mean, it's a whole market giving you all the advices on food, but let's look at the Ayurvedic principle. Prana is your cellular communication, communicates. Prana is the healing, it's called pranic healing. Like in yoga and Ayurveda, your breathing is not only in the lung, your whole body is breathing, your skin is breathing, liver is breathing, kidney is breathing. So the prana goes to the organ of this is to do the healing. There is a technique called pranic energizing technique how to improve your prana. Bastrika, Bastrika pranayama, which you do, active inhalation, active inhalation, Bastrika pranayama is called your prano pradhan pranayama. Prana means your life force, pradhan is the main, and that is your breathing technique of pranayama. So bastrika brings more prana in our body. Prana keeps us your health, healing, and your life. So at the end of our life, we say you have a last breath, you expired, and your prana comes out. Tejas is your inner and outer radiance. This is called an Agni. Agni is the fire. Agni is the fire within your body and mind. Remember in Yoga and Ayurveda, body and mind is a same organ, it's inseparable. If body does digestion of the food, mind does digestion of our thought process. We have this Agni, the fire, first in, in our stomach, is called Jathar Agni, digestive fire. Then we have 40 types of Agnis in our body. The five types of Agni in our liver. There's Agnis for all the tissues in the body. When our Agni ignites, like when you get a igniting the fire within our body. We call it igniting our digestive fire for proper digestion. It creates a radiance in our body and mind, which is shown in your body and your face as an aura around you. If you keep on doing a daily and regular practice of yoga, your friends or families will say, Wow, look at you, you are glowing. If you look at a picture of Jesus, picture of Buddha, you will see there is a aura. And a lot of scientists have started measuring it with a photography called Carolian photography. But it was very hard to measure that energy, but it's obvious. It is observational science. Personally, all of us. All of our yoga teachers, you know, we have six yoga teachers within us. When they started doing it a regular practice, people said, wow, look at you, you are glowing. So the tejas is primarily for our digestion, for the heat of our body, for our vision. 
it is connected to our pitta energy which is a metabolic energy which is called your psychophysical body type it is our cellular intelligence prana on the other hand is also connected to our vata energy which is a catabolic energy which is our psychophysical body type of movement people who are mobile pitta is a psychophysical body type of heat the fire within our body so vata is your cellular communication pitta is your cellular intelligence then comes the ojas which we are going to talk today restoring restoring means bring back restoring means make a proper production restoring means put it in the right place our ojas are not properly stored which creates all the disease in our body ojas is the end product of our digestive process before i go to the how the oja is produced oja is our cellular immunity so if you again go back prana is your cellular communication teja is your cellular intelligence ojas is your cellular immunity the moment you restore the cellular immunity you start rogi chikitsa treatment of a disease all the underlying chronic lifestyle related disorders gets under control then you create a called swasthrokha maintenance of health now let's talk a little bit about ojas before we start practicing in yoga in ayurveda the word we use or what you say in in western medicine we use the word you are what you eat that's why food and what kind of food what type of food to eat when to eat how to eat is a extremely huge big business in this whole world because we don't have enough agni but in yoga and ayurveda says you are what you digest it's not what you eat if the food is a issue you can look at people all over the world look at what russians are eating there is some areas of russia where the people are living 100 years the only food is your meat and dairy which is be absolutely no no to the western community look at what german say eat sour crowd and sausage they live longer than us they're able to digest that sour crowd and sausage to the ayurvedic principle of seven tissues called saptan hatu look if you look at all the foods around the world look at japanese are eating chinese are eating indians are eating yeah mexican are eating so food is not the concern for yoga and ayurveda yeah, obviously we have a lot of called a gurutva ahar how to eat when to eat but it is your digestion our whole body is based on proper digestion of the food the food is digested when it is taken 
in proper time, proper amount, and in proper condition of your mind. We'll go over with it again another time that yoga, Ayurveda, and proper yogic food and digestion. Once you eat a food, whatever kind, based on the country and ethnicity, a digestive process starts. Just to give you a very one simple tips which you will be able to change totally how to improve your ojas is that shift your main meal to the lunchtime. Our day in the morning is called a kapha time. So for us, our breakfast is very small unless we eat around the late, around nine or 10 o'clock because 10 to 2 is called a pitta time. So main meal is your lunch. Eat your food with a six taste, seven coloring fruits and vegetables. Once you have eaten the food, always remember the food needs to be digested with your digestive enzymes and the fire within your stomach. Stomach has like a stove top. It is called your Agni, Jathar Agni. So do not turn it off. Do not change your body's physiological power. So please don't drink a glass of ice cold water before your main meal. That ice cold water will shut down that digestive fire within you. The food is not going to be properly digested and ojas are not going to be formed. Do not drink too much fluid during your food. You drink some for help you swallowing, but if you drink too much fluid, you're going to dilute the digestive enzymes you are going to change the physiological temperature for enzymes not able to work. When the digestive process starts, the first food is converted into, is called a rasho dhatu. Dhatu is your tissue, rasho is your plasma. It liquefies body absorbs the liquefied food through your intestine into the blood as a plasma. It takes about five days. It's called an immature Rashadhatu to mature plasma. From the plasma it transfers into Raktadhatu. That means your red blood cell. Rashadhatu, Raktadhatu. Second tissue which is formed is your blood. Third tissue is formed called a Mangshadhatu. Mamsa is your muscle. Now it is forming your muscle cell. Fourth tissue is called a Medodhatu. That's your fatty tissue. Now the fat is being formed. Fifth one is called Asti Dhatu. Asti is your bones and joints. Now forming bones and joints. Majja Dhatu. Majja Dhatu is a bone marrow and primarily your neurological tissues. Whole nervous system, neurological tissues are formed. There is a Shukra Dhatu. Shukra Dhatu is your reproductive tissue your ovaries, your ovum, your testicles, your sperm, your semen. Then the substance produced is called ojas. So for yoga teachers who are listening to me or yoga practitioner, this is called seven tissues, Sanskrit name, 
Rashadhatu, plasma, Raktodhatu, blood, Mansodhatu is your muscles, Medodhatu is your fatty tissue, Astidhatu is your bones and joints, Majadhatu, nervous tissue, Shukradhatu, reproductive system. Now you understand. Our body is always going to a turnover. Our liver cells are dying, new cells are forming, the cells are dying. There's a cycle. This is called apoptosis, controlled death of the cellular tissue. But I don't eat liver to make a liver cells. I eat this piece of bread or piece of this rice or piece of this veggie or maybe this egg, maybe chicken, maybe meat, but I don't eat liver to make liver. I don't make heart to make my heart muscles. I don't eat bones to make my bones. With this process of food converting into seven tissues, all the tissues of the body is formed. When you have a proper Agni, Agni is your digestive fire, and there is also Agni for all the seven tissues. We need a proper Agni and proper Agni is also the function of the Ojans. This is a pure day cycle, Prana, Teja, Ojans. More Tejas will bring more Prana. More Prana will bring more your Tejas. More Tejas will bring more Ojans. It's a totally a cyclic process. So your ojas after proper digestion of the seven tissues which all of us know that it is formed from the proper digestion and proper agni of all the tissues. Like we have an agni for your rashadhatu for plasma. Agni for your Raktadhatu, for your blood. It's an Agni for your Mamsadhatu, muscles. Agni for your Medadhatu, fat. Agni for your Astidhatu, bones and joints. Agni for your Majadhatu, nervous system. Agni for your Shukradhatu, your reproductive system. Simple concept of obesity. You don't have enough Agni to convert your Medodhatu fat to your Asidhatu, Majadhatu, and Shukradhatu. So, whatever you eat, it converts into a fat and stays within your body. So, treatment of obesity in yoga and Ayurveda is called Agni Deepana. You ignite your body's Agni. When Ojas is formed, Ojas has a two component. One is called a pure oja, which is called para ojas. Para ojas in Ayurveda have been described as the eight drops and it is stays in your heart. It is the purest form of ojas. Next one is called apara oja. Apara oja means basically you can say a non-pure, impure. Pure is para oja. A para oja is a circulating oja. It is circulating throughout the whole body and a restoring oja brings the ojas to your primary in the para oja and proper opera oja. Beautiful, beautiful Ayurvedic concept. Once you understand this concept, you understand the basic concept of health and healing in our body and mind. That is the integration. That is called the integrative medicine. I'm sure most of you know about my book, Yoga Therapy, Ayurveda and Western Medicine. How to integrate this Eastern philosophy with the science of your Western medicine. So now you can come back. When you have a better ojas, 
which is a cellular immunity, you look healthy, you control your diseases, you have a better ocean, so it looks like you are glowing, you have a better prana, you get a pranic healing for all the organs. You fight even all the exogenous disease. Exogenous disease means disease coming from outside. All the toxins coming to our body, all the allergens coming in, all the viruses coming in, all the COVID virus coming in, coming from outside, body is able to fight. In Western concept, our immunity is two kinds. One is your cellular immunity and the circulating immunity. Cellular immunity is called a T cell immunity, which is a permanent immunity. Like if you get a one smallpox vaccination, one dose will give you lifelong immunity, which is a T cell immunity. Or a polio vaccine, you get one oral polio vaccine, it's a lifelong immunity. But other immunities are primarily is your circulating immunity, which is called the gamma globulin, IgG. It's called IgG, IgM, and that's the antibody we measure. Even today, if you get a, a, a COVID-19 vaccine, when you, when you test, a rapid test in your nostril, it's called the antigen. It's the antigen of the virus. It's a coating of the virus. PCR test is different. PCR test tells you, you know, RT-PCR, uh, you had a COVID before, you may have a COVID now, or you may have a COVID, even post-COVID syndrome. But antigen will tell you that you are carrier or you're equitably infected. Remember, for the COVID-19, say, Except for the malaria. Malaria is carried by your mosquito. So mosquito is a carrier. For COVID-19 is carried by human being. We are the carrier. If we have a proper ojas, we have a proper immunity, we are the carrier, but we never get infected. We never get any symptoms. So when you measure the blood, we measure the content of your immunoglobulin. IgG is a for immediate immunity, there are also better called IgM. So restoring orders means your immunity. So I have gone through all this stuff because you will see the practice what we do is exactly the practice we need to do every single day to ignite your Agni and to form Ojas. The whole outcome of yoga therapy, number one, Agni Deepana means you ignite your Agni, you ignite the digestive fire and the fire within your body. Nadi Shodhana, Nadi means your channel. The channel gets blocked by a substance called Ama and the Ama is a improper digestion of the food. When the food is not properly digested, it forms a toxic substance called ama, which will block your channels and prana cannot flow. So with a daily regular yoga practice, you will have a proper opening of the channels, called nadi shodhana, cleaning of the channels. So Agni Deepana, Nadi Shodhana, Ama Pachana, Ama is your toxin, Ama is the toxin of your undigested food, 
that will be properly digested. Ama pachana, pachana means digestion. Ama will be digested. Ojo sthapana means restoring ojas. Bring back oja where it's supposed to be. Agni deepana, nadi shodhana, ama pachana, ojo sthapana. These are the proper outcome of yoga therapy. So all starts for the proper digestion. Now, what is a proper digestion? We have a timing to eat. For example, our breakfast is very light. Wake up in the morning, we sit down, we all sit down in a squatting pose, we drink a two glass of water in the room temperature, we have a primary bowel movement, we do a morning, you know, brush our teeth, scrape our tongue, we use a gel neti to clean our nose, then we do a daily practice. One hour, 25 minutes of asanas, 25 minutes of pranayama, 10 minutes of meditation. We go, like a, we go a little longer, we go a little lesser, based on the time you have available. Breakfast is small because it's a kapha time. Night, because 6 to 10 is a kapha time, 10 to 2 is a pitta time. So that's your lunch. Your lunch, you are a part of the universe. You need this sunlight. You need this teja for proper digestion. Lunch is your having a sixth taste in the food. Astringent, bitter, pungent, salty, sour, sweet. We have four tests in West. Bitter, salty, sour, sweet. But astringent and pungent are the two tastes in yoga and Ayurveda. Astringent is a puckering. You put something in your mouth, your mouth puckers. Like a tannin. Like a pudding, I call it amla, Indian gooseberry. Pungent is a heat, like a chili. When you put a chili powder in your mouth, you get a heat, and that is also a different taste. And the seven coloring fruits and vegetables. We don't only eat fruits, you know, green, green, red, red. It's a vivgeo, seven coloring of your spectrum. Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. You eat only up to your, in a scale of 1 to 10, up to the scale of 7 or 8. You eat about your stomach, one third of your stomach. It's like your washing machine. You have a one third empty space, one third fluid, one third food. So you can do that churning, turning to have a proper digestion of the food. After eating, you start eliciting a parasympathetic response. Parasympathetic is called come and digest. Parasympathetic is supplied the whole gastrointestinal tract from your mouth to your anal canal. In the mouth, first you have your saliva. Like here, I'm very relaxed, I'm talking to you, I've been talking for a long time, but see my mouth is still extremely wet. I have all the secretion coming from my parotid gland, or all the salivary glands. When you're fearful, when you get a sympathetic response, mouth becomes dry. Parasympathetic activation is the proper digestive fire and is the proper creation of ojas and proper word is restoring ojas. Yoga therapy to restore oja basically comes from activation of parasympathetic tone and counteracting the sympathetic fright and flight response. Able to stay calm, quiet. 
able to relax as much as possible. A relaxation response. Able to sit down in an asana called the sthiram sukham asana. Sthiram is the stillness. When you're able to sit down in a stillness, I'm sitting down, I don't have those fascinations. Sukha, I'm happy. Asana, the way I'm sitting. Sthiram, Sukham, Asana, able to do all the pranayama and the breathing completely effortless. You know, call it effortless ease. Effortless Bastrika, effortless Kapalbhati, effortless Anulom Vilom Pranayama, effortless your Brahmri Pranayam, Ujjayi Pranayam, and your Om Chanti. So if you see all the yogis after a main meal, they'll sit down in a Vajrasana. So when you're able to sit in a thunderbolt or Vajrasana, it ignites your digestive fire. I'll come back a little later, so you notice. It ignites your digestive fire. So you sit down like this initially. So these are the steps you go by. So we can do hold the practice. But if you incorporate this, you will start restoring your ojas. When you're comfortable sitting like here, then you can put your feet aside and able to sit down on it. Then you keep your spine straight. See, the most important thing, this is one asana we do after a meal. We do the whole yoga practice in empty stomach. Vajrasana. The Vajrasana is the primary activator of your parasympathetic tone. Primary activator of your digestion. Incorporate daily as long as you can sit down. Initially a lot of people say I cannot do it, I have a knee problem, hip problem. Yes, we have all the problems but you'll be able to overcome all of them. In stages, impossible become possible. It happened to all of us. I hear it all the time. Well, I could be able to do it, but I cannot do it. I said, I know. You could be able to do all this stuff, you cannot do it now. And for us, we could never do anything. We are like a stick. Now we can do everything. We are flexible like a rubber band. I cannot do it and my mind cannot do it. From the, from the, your Vajrasana to ignite your Agni, you do your Mandukasana. Use your hand as a yogic fist, like a Balu Mushti Mudra or a baby fist. Put it at the level of your belly button. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Then breathe out. Slowly start coming down. Listen to your body signal. There will be no pain and your breath will be effortless. Now if you feel a pain here, back off. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Continue your breathing. Breathing out longer than breathing in. Stay for 5 to 10 breaths and this will happen to you. Slowly you'll be able to come down and when you come down, you always stay in that posture, in the asana. 5 to 10 breaths. Longer and longer you're able to sit down in Vajrasana. Longer and longer you're able to do Mandukasana. You come down and slowly come all the way down. Very important.
important asana to restore your ojas. Next, what brings your ojas is to be in a complete state of calmness. How to do it? You do it in stages and as you know, these are the practices we do all the time. It's nothing new, but just to give you the whole concept that people always want to know. I'm a teacher. Students are asking me. That's what I went for almost half an hour to discuss for all of you can understand. So first you sit down in a Sukhasana, easy pose, okay? So take your both the feet under your knees, cross here, drop it down. Look for two components of your body's response. First, pain. There should be no pain. The pain in yoga means pay attention. It's not like the Western concept is a no pain, no gain. No pain, you pay attention. If you have a pain here, you back up. Find the place where you have a little discomfort. We use the word called a comfortable discomfort. You're not completely, you know, you know, you're in a sukhasan, so, but you still have a little bit of a comfortable discomfort. If you stay here and close your eyes and do the breathing, you will see that neuroplasticity will set in. Neuroplasticity means your habit forming and slowly this thing is going to happen. When this thing is happening, you have few components to work with. First, you need to quiet down your mind. Hand is the connector between your body and mind. Remember, when you use a hand, if I want something, I put my hand first before I give a talk. I see something nice, give a sign. So touch your index finger and thumb. This is called your Gano Mudra or Dhano Mudra, Meditation Mudra. You put it on your knees, quieting down your mind. Mind is the content of your five senses. I see, I hear, I smell, I taste and touch. Close your eyes. Vision is the number one stimulus to keep your minds active and agitated. Because all the information is coming through your eyes, you're going to your mind. Keep your mouth closed. And pay attention to your breath. Lung is like a balloon. It has a six liter capacity. It needs 1.5 liter to keep it open and a 4.5 liter to exchange. Normally we breathe only 500 cc like half a liter, 80 to 90 percent reserve. So for all yoga practices you breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Breathe out longer than breathing in. Inhalation is sympathetic, exhalation is parasympathetic. Able to extend your exhalation, you bring the parasympathetic tone, you bring the digestive fire, you bring the proper digestion, and you bring the restoring ojas. What a simple concept. Don't push yourself. When you had a normal breathing, you would be able to talk, you would be able to sing. 
the way we practice first first we start doing say two second in four second out and he did a slowly increase to three second in six second out we went slowly and slowly we went maybe eight second in 16 second out we've been doing so long i can do easily 10 second in 20 second out the moment you can increase the amount number with the breathing in and breathing out you start reducing the number of breathing rate normally we breathe 15 to 16 per, per minute which is pretty sympathetic which counteracts our digestive part simply you can do two seconds in and four seconds out it will be six seconds your respiratory rate will drop down to 10 if you're going to four seconds in eight seconds out it will drop down to five We'll do eight second in, 16 second out. It will drop down to almost three. So let's see how to do it. First, breathe out first. Two second in, one and two. Four second out. For me, it's very easy, but for you, if you're starting, just starting, you know, at this level. Let me show you increasingly how we have practiced. In stages, impossible become possible. Breathe out first, count of four in, count of eight out. You feel a profound level of relaxation in your body and mind. To balance both sides, what I do, I'll go back and change my foot. Try this. You'll feel that one side is easier, one side is easier than the other side. But it is entirely normal because we are in a state of imbalance. Let me show you, breathe out first, six second in, 12 second out. Even if it's easy for me, six seconds in, 12 seconds out. Let's go to show, show it to you, eight seconds in, 16 seconds out. It will be 24 seconds. So even less than three breathing per minute. Deeper the breathing, lower the number of breath you live longer extend exhalation extend your longevity reduce your respiratory rate live longer in nature turtle breathes three to four per minute lives hundreds and hundreds of years dog breathing 30 to 40 breath per minute lives only 18 20 years Eight second in, 16 second out. Breathe out first.
wonderful experience. Unless you can do it, you will never feel. We feel our whole body and mind, a profound level of relaxation. This profound level of relaxation is, is helping to digest our food, converting into seven tissues, Saptodhatu, and restoring ojas. So I put in my, uh, the picture on my Facebook that how you can do it and slowly and in stages in a lotus pose with your meditative posture which is we call it a preventive medicine now take my heel all the way to the back take my other foot my knees drops down this is called a siddhasan perfect pose I continue the same thing with my hand mudras, eyes closed, with my breathing, I become more and more comfortable and more and more relaxation sets in. To balance it, I will do the opposite side now. I took my right heel, my left foot high up, and I sit down in a siddhasan in the opposite side. From here, Next is a half lotus or swastika asana. Put my feet high up, sit down, same, eyes closed, dhanu mudra, breathing out longer than breathing in. Feel any pain, I back off. Find a place where I have comfortable discomfort, but no pain. So once I put it here, again, I stay. How long you stay? It's all based on your body's own feeling. Feel your body. Listen to your body's signal. Introspection. Listening to the doctor within you. I am the cause and I'm the cure for all my chronic diseases. By the time you're able to sit down, by the time you're able to restore your ojas, COVID won't come to you. No disease will come to you. All the disease are going to be afraid of you. And look at how I'm going, you know, from one side to the other side, and I'm equal. And I've shown you so many times, we do like a, called cow face, gomukhasan. We'll be doing equal on both sides. When you put our hands, you'll be able to hold it equally on both sides and able to, like a handshake. That means activation of both sides of your brain. Able to do the balancing poses equally on both sides able to do alternate nostril breathing evenly on both sides. The moment you activate both sides of the brain, the balance comes in and yoga, the health is a balance of your body, mind and spirit. Finally, you are in a position here now and I'm showing you all the steps how to get in into your lotus pose or padmasana and Many of our yoga practitioners or yoga teachers, they get in right away. It's okay to get in right away, nothing wrong. But when you get into these stages and incorporate your hand mudras, hand gestures, incorporate your closing your eyes, incorporate your breath, breathing out longer than breathing in effortlessly, you enter state of a profound level of relaxation response, activation of the parasympathetic tone, activation of your digestive fire, and creation of your seven tissues, and the ojas restore para oja,
Pio Rogers and Apara Oja, the circulating Ojas. Ojas in English you can translate into immunity or you can translate into Ojas like a, your strength, your vigor, your ability to fight and provide strength. In whole yoga practice, the more relaxation you can get in, more strength. Savasana, Shakti Asana, laying your face down, be completely relaxed, is the most powerful asanas in yoga. Now, at this level, you are in a state of relaxation, state of your parasympathetic response, you are able to feel the lightness in the body and mind. Lightness is tested, I've shown it to you many times, is a thulasan, raising. Put your hands on both sides, just if you put, put a little push it down, your whole body goes high up. Body goes high up and you will be able to stay high up. be able to high up, say I'm talking, I'm breathing, I'm effortless. Very, very important practice. This practice will bring your ojas. Able to breathe in, I breathe out. So remember, always breathe out first because this balloon needs to be empty. Breathe out first. Then able to breathe in. So basic underlying concept is activation of the vagal tone, activation of the vagus nerve. Vagus nerve is called a vagabond. It's the largest nerve in our body. It's a cranial nerve. It comes from the brainstem. It has a path. It goes to the both sides, comes down in the brainstem, through the foramen ovale. It comes down in between your carotid artery and the internal jugular vein. It comes down, it gives branches to your larynx. Superior laryngeal nerve, nerve to the pharynx, the pharyngeal plexus, then comes down. It has a, on the right side, it goes underneath the subclavian artery. It gives a nerve called a recurrent laryngeal nerve. Goes up and supplies your larynx. And the left side, it goes underneath the arch of the aorta and comes up called a inferior laryngeal nerve. Larynx is supplied by your vagus nerve. Able to do a proper ujjayi pranayam activates the vagus nerve. The nerve goes down, the, <clears throat> the left one comes in front, right one goes to the back. At the gastroesophageal junction here, and it's called anterior and posterior gastric nerve. It supplies the whole gastrointestinal tract. Able to do Kapalbhati Pranayama. It ignites the digestive fire. Able to do a Udhyani Band, abdominal lock. I have done all these practices. I'm telling you what practice to do to Restore your ojas. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Completely breathe out. Suck your stomach in and hold. Restore ojas. When you do breath holding, when you breathe out first, take a deep breath in and you hold your breath. The lung 
slowly and slowly start expanding because the air exchange is coming from the blood. When the lung expands, it has a rib cage, it cannot expand anymore. Then there is a phenomena called a ref reflex, heading brewer reflex sets in. It is in the periphery of the lung. It is from the activation of the vagus nerve. It pushes the lung back so it does not go beyond the rib cage. That is a profound relaxation, activation of the vagus nerve, and in yoga it's called a murcha pranaya. It also incorporates your chin lock, when you bring the chin down, it massages the two, your carotid sinuses in both sides of your neck. Massaging the carotid sinus we do during supraventricular tachycardia, when heart rate goes suddenly go high up, and massaging the carotid sinus quiets down your cardiovascular system and nervous system. So the showing you one time Murcha Pranayama. Murcha Pranayama is breathing out first, Take a deep breath in. Hold your breath and slowly drop your chin down to touch the chest and hold your breath. It is so relaxing, it is called murcha. Murcha means all unconscious. I have seen many of our practitioners, they do it before going to sleep, practicing murcha pranayama. A simple practice we do called pumping and cupping is a wonderful practice. We'll do at the end. We'll finish with the pumping and cupping and you'll see how we finish with a activation of vagus nerve and parasympathetic tone. Yoga understands this parasympathetic, sympathetic and peripheral nervous system and the role of vagus nerve for thousands and thousands of years. And recently you will see all the write-up about polyvagal theory. Go ahead and listen to Iyengar. Iyengar, I have even seen some clips about 40 years back. Iyengar is talking about the whole concept of sympathetic, parasympathetic, peripheral nervous system, how it is connected to the yoga practices. Able to do a, we call it a Valsalva maneuver or called a Corno Rogantor Pranayama. You breathe out first, take a deep breath in and trying to blow it out with your closed nose and mouth, open up your tubes called eustachian tube to hit the middle ear, but in the process you constrict your pharynx and activate your vagus nerve. You constrict your pharynx and try to bear down, like you push it down. What it does? To have the stool come out through the anal canal, your anal sphincter relaxes and your contracts your rectum and anal canal. So able to bear it down is a parasympathetic activation. If you say that, 
Kapalbhati Pranayama is a vagal activation and your Ujjayi Pranayama and you will see Ujjayi Pranayama with a chin lock. Jalandhar Banda had a left nostril breathing called Chandra Vedi Pranayama means moon energy, Chandra Vedi is your parasympathetic activation. So let me show you this simple three practices before I finish because these are practices you do all the time. This is a session I made it primarily for yoga practitioners, yoga teachers, so understand the basic concept of how yoga therapy causes rejuvenation, how you can restore ojas. Okay, so Korlo Roganto Pranayama or Valsalva Maneuver. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Try to blow out with your nose and mouth closed. Both of my eustachian tube opened up. You do this practice primarily when your plane is taking off or plane is taking down. You will see you get a little pain in your ear because your the tubes which connects the middle ear with your throat gets blocked. One more time. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Blow out with your mouth and not closed. Able to be done. And human being does all the time. They're constipated. They have sit down. You know, you have to sit down in a squatting pose, malasana. <coughs> activation of vagus nerve, parasympathetic tone, activation of your digestive fire. Ujjayi pranayama, slowly closing your throat. It is not the tightness, the relaxation activation of your superior and inferior laryngeal nerve. It's a activation of your cricothyroid muscle and the intrinsic muscles of the larynx. In a vagus nerve, 80% of your informations are called afferent, A, like admit. 80% of the information goes inside your brainstem. 20% called efferent, E, like an exit, comes out. The exit comes out through a, called a hypoglossal nerve, which is a tongue, and also glossopharyngeal nerve, which supplies your soft palate. Two muscles in the soft palate, palatopharyngeus and palatoglossus, it tightens up and it controls your Snoring. Snoring gets better with Ujjayi Praya. It pushes the tongue in front by activating through hypoglossal nerve. It corrects your sleep apnea. Abstracting sleep apnea even is a cause of our death these days. Recently a famous singer from India died from obstructive sleep apnea. Initially, the Ujjayi Pranayama will sound like a sound of an ocean, both inhalation and exhalation. Mm -hmm. 
slowly you constrict and try to do a little bit of a higher ujjayi pranayama like this mm. When you do it longer and longer, you get so relaxed that you get the abdominal lock without even trying to do it. Ujjayi pranayama gets you the abdominal lock, then you incorporate chin lock and the left nostril breathing. Profound relaxation response. Let me show it to you. Breathe out first. Deep breath in. Completely out. Ujjayi Pranayam to activate the vagus nerve through the laryngeal branches along with a chin lock Jalandhar Bandha by activating your carotid sinuses and the left nostril breathing the moon energy which is through a right side of the brain which is intuitive cooling female and parasympathetic putting all three together we'll be finishing with this called a pumping and cupping which is a activation of your auricular branch of the vagus nerve activation of the carotid sinuses and the massaging of the two muscles trapezius and sternomastoid muscle which is inserted into the back of your neck, called your occipital tubercle, which is supplied by a cranial nerve called the accessory nerve. Able to tame the cranial nerves, quiets down your mind and body, and activates your parasympathetic tone, and again, restoring audience. Take your both the hands, keep rubbing, or before you say, as I said all the time to you, we all do this thing with our health tracker. I have this Apple Watch, I have my EKGs, I have my heart rate monitor, and all the monitors are going on here when I'm doing it. Let me do it one here. Let me do it one time. Just going to do a little EKG to see my pattern. Perfect. Excellent EKG response. Is that good? So, the heart rate monitors we all do with our, so we have our physiological parameter when you're practicing. So we combine, this is called integrative medicine, the science of modern medicine with the wisdom of a traditional system of healing. Keep rubbing your hands, keep rubbing your hands. When you feel the warmth of your hand, if you're wearing glasses, remove your glasses, take the hands, put it as a cup over both of your eyes. Let the eyes take all the heat from your hand. It relaxes the ciliary muscles. The ciliary muscles 
which holds your lens and by the pull of the ciliary muscle your lens becomes less convex when a ciliary muscle is relaxed the lens became more convex it almost acts like a reading glasses we yogis we don't wear any glasses personally myself i have not used glasses at all in my life massage of your forehead massage of your eyes massage in your face all the muscles in the face are attached to your skin so the muscles are relaxed it removes all the wrinkles it removes all the frowning your face looks like you are glowing take your hand massage the ear lobe massage the ear behind massage the ear in front even inside your external auditory canal there is a branch called auricular branch of the vagus nerve stimulates your vagus nerve in fact in lot of oriental countries they do a call the ear picking to stimulate the auricular branch of vagus nerve for a profound relaxation response during massaging which is called a thigh massage you also take your hand massage your carotid sinuses on both sides massaging the carotid sinuses quite down your cardiovascular system and nervous system take your hands to the back massage at the at the lower part if you feel the your middle part of the head it will come down it's called a small prominence it's called a tubercle occipital tubercle the two muscles here trapezius and sternomastoid muscles these are the muscles from the cranial nerves they also attaches here called the mastoid process and it creates a profound relaxation response bring your hands in front of your heart chakra both of your head said i honor the divinity with you i'm in the profound relaxation response activation of the parasympathetic tone digestion of my food to the seven tissues and the formation of ojas restoring the ojas and you could see i've been sitting in this lotus pose for some time i am in a profound level of relaxation thank you for joining and we'll come back again as i said uh if i'm here i'll be doing the classes virtually in fact even today we are having our international association of yoga therapists we are having our long board meeting it's a day long board meeting already started about almost hour and 15 minutes back so i already told them that i cannot miss my saturday class i'll join the board meeting after the class they have agreed and so here i am with all of you hope to see you again in next saturday and any questions you have regarding rejuvenation regarding your restoring ojas regarding your health and healing please shoot me a question and i'll be able to answer on time thank you for joining